Thank you very much, Rakesh. As a serious German professor, I'm going to stand at my lectern, right? And I'm going to present you a few ideas about what is probably behind our fascination with Leonardo. We are, of course, all big fans of Leonardo, whose uh, 500th uh, death anniversary we are uh, celebrating or commemorating this year. We admire his uh, technological genius, his artistic work. But what exactly are we talking about when we talk about Leonardo, the te technologist, the ingenious inventor? First of all, we are talking about a myth. Um, it is true, already in the 16th century, Leonardo was praised as a genius of theater and flying machines. But the image of a genius who constantly thought about submarines, war technology, automobiles, flying machines, and not to forget automatic rose turners, was mainly developed in the late 1930s. It was fascist Italy that celebrated Leonardo the brilliant, as the brilliant founder of modernity, of course, an Italian. A more exact inventory turns out to be much more sober. It's just, not just about the famous bicycle, which in the meantime has gained iconic status. Probably a forgery of the, the early 20th century that was smuggled into Leonardo's manuscripts or codices. More importantly, hardly any of Leonardo's inventions made it um, to the point of application, very much remained vague and sketchy. Leonardo therefore left practically no immediate footprint in the history of technology. His fame as a master technician can be traced back, I would say, to two things. Firstly, to his rhetoric, which owes much of its genius as a draftsman. And second, the fact that Leonardo made a mystery of his creativity. Paradoxically, the very inaccessibility of his enormous production of codices served this purpose. The late result of this inaccessibility is, uh, da, of course, the Da Vinci Codex, Da Vinci Code. Let me begin with Leonardo's visual rhetoric, uh, and then I will talk briefly about Leonardo's working practice, and only in the end I try to answer the initial and very tricky and very difficult question. What can we learn from Leonardo that could help break through innovation today? When Leonardo returned to Florence in the year 1500, um, after 18 years in Milan, he was able to convince the local authorities to start diverting the entire Arno River in order to facilitate navigability and cut off the arch enemy Pisa from the sea. More than 2,000 workers actually began with the monstrous work before the government soon realized that the project was doomed to failure. The large map that you see from 1503-4, now in Windsor Castle, is evidence of Leonardo's eloquence in drawing. The complex sheet, pen with brown ink, black chalk, washes in different colors, shows the new course of the Arno in bold swing. You can see it from right to left. Uh, the mixture in this drawing of geographic accuracy, note, for instance, the tributaries of the Arno, and the loosely thrown down new course of the Arno, it demonstrates three crucial criteria that Leonardo brought to perfection. Know-how, or at least the projection of know-how, diligence, and daring. Um, and these are precisely, of course, the qualities that still make a great impression on the audience today local administrators, shareholders, strategic partners, and so on. Perhaps Leonardo, in front of his amazed audience, made a great gesture of left-handedness from right to left, drawing the new course of the river with wet, a wet brush directly onto the paper. As a draftsman, Leonardo was able to bring to paper both extremely accurate drawings and very rapid, ingenious sketches. The latter, in particular, allowed the audience to participate directly in the master's ingenuity. But we can also know how eloquent Leonardo was as a speaker, how engaging his manners were. He was indeed the perfect courtier. His environment knew that he was constantly creative. He drew incessantly of the approximately 18,000 sheets he filled, about 6,000 survived, the largest drawing legacy of the Renaissance. Most of it was preserved because Leonardo was so much revered as an artist, especially as the creator of The Last Supper in Milan. 
He kept the boundaries between art, science and technology open and achieved thereby, quite interestingly, that everything he drew and wrote, including the technical and scientific drawings, was admired as if it would be a work of art or a source of technological invention that was still waiting to be deciphered. This calculated lack of understanding of his environment is crucial. Leonardo was also so inspiring because he encouraged and still encourages today his audience to use him as a surface for their own projections. Leonardo was not so much a source of specific scientific and technical ideas, but a man who lived a new ideal of incessant, meticulous research, an image that had to be filled by observers and readers. But Leonardo was also so creative because he did not burden himself with formal constraints. I already pointed out that uh, Leonardo was a man who feel, felt much better as a courtier with a fixed salary, as a basic researcher at a large research institution, so to speak, than as an independent entrepreneur or an owner of an independent workshop. That's why he enjoyed so much being at the court of the Duke of Milan and after his downfall moved mainly to the courts of powerful princes, to Rome, to the papal court, and in the end to France as a pensionnaire of the French king. Neither in Milan nor in Rome nor in uh, Amboise on the Loire were concrete achievements ex expected by Leonardo. He enjoyed tremendous freedom. And this creative freedom was the basis for Leonardo's groundbreaking investigations of nature as a process, as a gigantic interaction of antagonistic forces. Each of his research fields, which you all know, above all optics, hydraulics, physics, meteorology, geology, flight of birds, anatomy, art theory, each of these fields is shaped by the model of opposing forces, of antagonism. And it is easy to understand why Leonardo so much appreciated mechanics before this background. His mind was always focused on the transmission and balance of kinetic forces. But freedom was also the basis for Leonardo's written work. As a child, he only attended secondary school and therefore could not speak Latin, the basis of all these, the sciences of that time. In his late 30s only, Leonardo thus laboriously taught himself Latin vocabulary. And this very illiteracy is also evident in the form of Leonardo's manuscripts. He often filled the sheet with very different themes. For Leonardo, the sheet was often a laboratory of thought experiments. And in this context, he also invented his own handwriting, as you know, the mirror writing from right to left, quite uh, um, uh, um, convenient for a left-hander. But it created something that Leonardo could have benefited from as a source of continuous inspiration, as if he would have created his own, um, um, his own uh, uh, semantics, so to speak, his own science system. Leonardo was, um, now very quickly to the main question, how can he be a role model for technological innovation today? We must not forget the enormous difference between Leonardo's culture and our own time. Leonardo was completely alien to two basic categories of modern technology, division of labor and the idea of scientific progress. Leonardo was a thoroughly individual researcher who could not, would never have been able to participate in a modern research project which, with its complex architecture of numerous collaborators. He wanted to determine independently how he had to move between the very big questions, for instance, what will happen to the shape of the globe in the, of the globe of the, uh, of the globe of the earth in the distant future versus what kind of vortices does the heart produce when it squeezes blood into the aortic valve? As I already said, Leonardo thrived, especially in an environment that guaranteed his total freedom. Um, but we should certainly learn from Leonardo in three main other respects. First, he was the very opposite of a one-track idiot. Leonardo teaches us that the creative minds of all times have always been much more than just specialists in one field. We can derive the golden rule from Leonardo. If you want to be truly creative, you have to be versatile. Countless brilliant minds confirm this. The natural sciences, the humanities, and the arts are very strongly related. 
So hire people who are versatile. Second, Leonardo is the very paradigm of lifelong learning. Encourage your employees to learn a foreign language or do it yourself and possibly an artistic practice even at an advanced age like Leonardo. Every company is guaranteed to benefit from it. And third, we now know how much scientific and technological process progress depends on visualization, on imaging techniques. For Leonardo, his drawings are a fundamental tool for recording observations and developing hypotheses. His mastery, especially as you can see here, of perspective, very, very unusual for Leonardo's time, especially provided a breakthrough for technological drawing and therefore also for technological progress in the future. At any time, and so today I would say, new creative forms of images are needed to make innovation in science and technology not only more comprehensible to the public, but also to generate innovation in the first place. In contrast to Leonardo's time, as we all know, modern science has become largely abstract. It is precisely here that modern imaging techniques are indispensable. Above all, processes, this is from DC in Hamburg, uh, the rotation of a molecule just filmed a few months ago. Above all, processes of form and shape, but also the interaction of invisible forces, demand new visual modeling of movement and dynamics. Leonardo would have been enthusiastic about the possibilities of new film technologies. He would have searched for analogies between micro and macros macroscopic processes of forming and shaping, but also for the possibilities to fun visualize functions. However, and this is perhaps the point that is least easily understandable for us, Leonardo would have always been interested in making these images appear as plausible and even as attractive as possible. We could learn from Leonardo that Scientific breakthrough and sustainable technological innovation very often go hand in hand with visual beauty. We may wonder about this, but Leonardo was convinced that every technological innovation ultimately serves countless purposes, but in the end, and that is Leonardo the artist, especially one purpose, to transform the entire earth into a great work of art. Thank you very much.